Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie's at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this last match is going to be between 400 and Sizedrum versus Dying Freund and Icons on Hide and Seek. So, just get it started. I mean, we saw the last game, GBC had a decent mid game, kind of fell down in the early game, kind of fell apart at the end of the game, but their mid game was strong. So we'll see how this goes. And 400 going for Spider, Spider going for Shieldbot Factory, I with Icons going for Spider, and Dying Friend going for Gunships. I noticed Spider is kind of tricky on this factory, actually. And a Blastwing Rush coming in here. Forget the analysis right now. We've got a Blastwing Rush to worry about, or at least one single lone Blastwing. Okay, we don't have a Blastwing Rush to worry about. We have a Blastwing to worry about. Actually, it is worrying. It's basically stopping all the fleas from existing. So at this point, 400 basically can't build anything. That was a remarkably effective blast wing, actually. Basically, no fleas have been built for the last minute, except for that one. So not a whole lot of scouting coming in from the Southwest team. GBC obviously was able to scout a little bit with the the blast wing. Surprisingly, though, it looks like I didn't notice actually. Sidestream has actually started out in the Southwest of the base. Which is a little bit unusual. I'm not surprised by Dimefriend's starting location. Dimefriend's starting location makes a lot of sense. I mean, Sizedrum's location makes sense too, because you want to take that plus 2.7. So basically, the Southwest team is focusing more on taking the economy, while the GBC, much like last game, is focusing a lot more on sticking together in the solid core. And with a good Rapier shot coming in here. I mean, a few more Rapiers need to come in here to really do meaningful damage. But still, this is a nice harassment. Just Keeping it harassy. Keeping it difficult. And the Wasp finally doing something. But yeah, at this point, as I was saying, with Spiderbot Factory on Hide and Seek, I find it rather difficult. I've seen that it doesn't always work out. It's a little bit tricky to do. Because, yeah, spiders have all these cliffs to work with, but the cliffs aren't usually near much of anything of value. Unless they're inside your opponent's base, at which point getting in there, you're doing a lot of damage to begin with. But in terms of the center, yeah, they're kind of handy, but you really have to use the cliffs. Otherwise, I mean, in this case, it's not a big deal. We do have a shield bot factory, but we don't have a lot coming in from the GBC. But yeah, when you have something just go through the lanes and just power through, that doesn't care about spiders. The spider doesn't really do much. So we'll probably see Sizedrum do a lot of damage, just either running around with bandits or running around with shield bots, and the spiders probably won't do a whole lot. We'll see, though. We'll see how Icons plays this. Icons going very early Hermit, Rec or Hermit Venom. I agree with that, especially with the shield bots being fought against. But yeah, Hermit Venom should be a good choice. And Redback coming in, is it pure Redback? I think 400 is going for pure Redback. So 400 with the strong Redback with, like I said, just Venom Hermit coming in from the GBC. So Icons clearly just wanted to go for the Assault Force. That's what I mean. That's why I said go for it. 400 isn't going to be going for a lot of stuff that a Redback is going to deal with. On the other hand, the Redback here to deal with potential Banshees, that makes a lot of sense. Not potential. Actual Banshees. They're real. They exist. And they scream for your death. Actually, surprisingly, Banshees don't scream. I just noticed that. They're, their laser's very low frequency. That doesn't really fit the name. Oh, well, whatever. It's not like names are often fitting to begin with. So, that aside, yeah, Recluse. Okay, Recluse and Redback. I mean, Red Recluse makes sense against the Hermits. The Hermit in general makes sense against a potential shield ball. Venom makes sense against bandits. So yeah, I like this composition. I mean, the bandits could be dealt with the Redback, but the problem, of course, is the Spiderbot factory isn't really going to be vulnerable to Redback that much. I mean, what would there be? Fleas, I guess, which is kind of vulnerable to anything. I mean, Venoms kill fleas, no problem. A couple more Banshees coming in here from Dimefreund, and a decent amount of damage being dealt. I mean, these Banshees just going around, scabbing around, seeing what's going on. I mean, they know a lot of what's going on here. They don't necessarily know that these Vandals are here. They will, the hard way. And that Banshee decides that discretion is a horrible part of Valor. Unwisely deciding that, however. I mean, really. Getting away. Surviving. That's usually a good idea. But nope, that Banshee had wanted to have none of it. 
At this point, 400's commander being the main focus of attack. Not sure if that's going to help much. I mean, at this point, it looks like Dimefriend is being able to help... Or Dimefriend, I should say, is being able to help out Icons a little bit with the Banshees. But I don't see that lasting. The Vandals are being built up. No Tarantulas, mind you. Just Vandals. And Icons losing all their bandits. That's not what they want to see. This is what I mean. Venom Hermit just does a good enough job. I mean, the bandits, there aren't... It's not like with Glaives. There's not quite as many of them. But they get stunned out just as well. And they're also not quite as fast. So the Hermits can actually have a chance of hitting them when they're not being stunned. Unlike with Glaives, where that's basically not going to happen. I mean, it can happen if there's enough Hermits and enough Glaives and a big enough ball. Yeah, okay, maybe. But otherwise, no. Otherwise, it's not happening. And at this point, it looks like this surgical strike here from the GBC getting just slowly but surely pushed away. The Hermit's doing a nice job. I mean, they're dealing some damage to the Recluses. I just don't think this is, this is going to work out. I feel like the attrition is going against them. At the same time, though, the GBC is expanding all around the map. Naked expansions in some cases. Well, rather, Dying going for a lot of naked expansions. Icons being a bit more timid. But still, that's a lot of expansion going on. GBC already 10 metal per second ahead. Including Overdrive, mind you. But still, that's metal. They're making that metal. That's money they can spend. At this point, the GBC... That strike from Icons, that's been pushed away. That doesn't matter, though. There's Banshees. There's a lot of expansions. There's stuff that's going to be built up in the mid to late game, and Dying Throne going for another Amphib Factory, just like last game. So we probably will see Grizzlies coming up fairly soon, and this is what I mean. If you have a strong enough force that you can just power through spiders, it doesn't matter so much. Granted, we are seeing a lot of spider uses of cliffs, so that's good. I like to see that. I mean, it's why I like the Spider Factory, because they are all terrain. I like it. I've mentioned before, Spiderbot Factory is my favorite ground factory. If I haven't before, I do now. It's it's my favorite ground factory. I just like how it plays. It's sneaky. But yeah, spiders and gunships. So the GBC is actually basically playing my two favorite factories right now. Anyhow, the racketeer. Ooh, racketeer being stunned out. How ironic. That is not what they want to have happen. That's the exact opposite. And 400 being forced back to their base. I mean, overall, the Southwest team has been pretty much contained to the Southwest. Appropriately enough. Well, the GBC, they haven't taken the Southeast yet. They're still working on that. Once they do, though, it's basically just going to be a contain and that'll be game. At this point, GBC is already so far ahead economically that it's rather difficult to deal with. I mean, this Weaver not really able to build anything in time. The Skydust doing nothing because it wasn't built. Now with that Weaver gone and the Convict gone, this Southeast side's basically taken. GBC's going to take that shortly. There's not much that can be done about it. I mean, 400 is trying. But it's just with the economic difference and the fact that 400 doesn't have a whole lot. I mean, 400 is really the one that's pushing out more on the ground. Looks like G... Looks like... Not GBC. Looks like Size Drum focusing much more on anti-air. They're not really focused on dealing with the ground. I mean, there are the Racketeers being built up from time to time, but really it's just 400 building up fleas at this point. Which is actually working out okay. This is what I mean by speed. I mean, I was talking about glaze, but fleas count too. Really fast, and unless the Hermits get a lucky shot, the fleas will just kill them. Eventually. It takes a very long time, but eventually they die. Or there's Venoms and they just die immediately. That happens too. That should happen right now. I mean, hey, that's why you have the Venoms. In case of fleas. Because, of course, we don't actually have proper flea medication or flea collars. We just have venom. Looks like Southwest... Oh, never... I was about to say, managing to maintain their territory. But no, in fact, they're losing more and more of it with the Southwest itself being destroyed. Thanks to the Banshees. Dying Thrones Banshees continuing to do a number on everything. And there's the Grizzly I was talking about. Finally built up. Already done. The center of the map, pretty much entirely in GBC's control, and the northwest as well. The southeast, Banshee's double-checking to make sure there's nothing there. No wasps there yet, that's the next step, of course. No wasps actually really doing anything right now on the map. Yep, just sitting over here in the southeast, chilling. Not really doing much. Shiftless little piece of metal. Didn't know what's good for it. Anyway. Grumbling about one of the players' workers aside that's not doing anything. Because actually a lot of the workers are being out of the right now. 400 
Okay, doing some reclaim, trying to get their economy back on track, getting a crab up as well, which I don't see doing a whole lot of good. I mean, I understand the sentiment. That's pretty much all they have. It's just that there's a lot to deal with. And they don't have a lot of crowd control options. I mean, okay, there's the Racketeer, which is nice, but really, the Outlaws... Not even the Outlaw would be great. I mean, the Racketeer is getting rid of the Venoms, with a bunch of bandits coming in here to try to help. I don't know, the bandits have to deal with... A bunch of rogues! That's what it would be. Get a bunch of rogues. That's what Sidestrom needs to do right now. Or get air. Okay, I think Sidestrom is way too obsessed with air. It has been a very long time since Diamond Friends built any air, u air units at all. There are still 10 Banshees, yes. There are Banshees at large, that's true. However, that's not the main army, and they haven't been built for a long time. Sidestrom's way too focused on anti-air, and that's pretty much failing them. I mean, a lot of their money has gone into those Venoms. Sorry, Venoms. Vandals. Like, oops. They, okay, only 600 metal, but actually that's the ones that are still alive. But that's money that could have gone into Outlaws, that could have gone into... Rogues. Rogues in particular, that's really what I'd go for. Rogue Racketeer at this point would be awesome. That's what they need to build. And that's not what's being built. Strider Hub coming in for Diamond as well. So at this point, it'll be probably just a Banshee, Grizzly, and Spider Flank all together with the Dante finishing up. But yeah, I feel like a lot of it just came down to Sidestrom being really paranoid about air and about getting anti-air and not really getting a whole lot of anti-ground, which is what they needed. And 400 can't really do as much, because Spider-Bot Factory, they're... they're tricky. And by that I mean, they're both rather difficult to deal with, in that they do a lot of silly little things that can be difficult to deal with, but also that they rely on doing those silly things. They rely on knowing where everything is, they rely on ambushes, they rely on cliffs, all this stuff are things that you have to work with, and the thing is, flat ground, fighting against strong forces that are just straight up damage, that's not where Spider shines. They can do okay, but it's not where they shine. Especially on the defensive like this, they can't choose the engagement. If Spider can't choose the engagement, then Spider's basically at the, I mean, anyone, in general, if you can't choose the engagement, you're at the mercy of your opponent. But Spider, I find, is particularly difficult for that sort of thing. I, I don't find it very easy to deal with that. And the Infiltrator not able to do anything. The Venom's getting lucky with their splash damage, but hey, that worked. And this is going to be game. GBC pushing in, getting rid of 400's base, and while Sidestrom clearly trying to deal with everything here and actually doing a decent job of getting rid of the Banshees, they finally had their anti-air pay off. Unfortunately, that comes at the cost of the match as a whole. And that was that, so yeah. Really got to pay attention to what's going on, what your opponent's building. That's a big part of 0k, is knowing what your opponent's going to build, what your opponent has built, how they're going to use it, and then what you need to do to counter it. If you're not playing against what your opponent's doing, you're, especially on a purely defensive thing like Vandals, they don't do a whole lot against ground. I think with anti-air in general, if it's pure anti-air, that's all it deals with. Anti-ground, of course, can deal with your main spaces and everything. I mean, you can use anti-ground to ultimately win the game. Anti-air, not so much. So you got to be careful about that. Unless it's Swiss. Those can win the game. But yeah, that's that. A lot more metal being produced by GBC in general. They had an economic advantage for most of the game. That was the biggest part. I mean, the second biggest part was that Sizedrum didn't really manage to defend, despite the anti-air they had, and of course they lost their economy. And not a whole lot of harassment. There's certainly not a whole lot of dealing with the south side. The south side was never taken. I mean, Dynthron took the north side took all the north side. The south side, nothing was built on it. At all. Ever. There was not a single thing built on any of these southern mexes. Except maybe these two. Yeah, these two. But otherwise, this is all completely virgin territory. I mean, at this point, we see Icons has taken some of it, but for the most part, no one took any of it. So yeah, that just did a whole lot of damage for the southwest team. They couldn't really work with that very much. I mean, all I can say about tactics is kind of moot when you consider the sheer economic difference between the two teams. Anyhow, that's that. So, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. Thanks for watching. And once again, sign up for that tournament. Go to the 0k forums. It should be the latest news post. Just go up there, sign up for the 2v2 tournament, and it should be loads of fun. We already have quite a few people signed up. Just more people signing up, the better. So, yeah, 9.30 a.m., 
UTC, October 8th. Be there, or be in the lobby in the ZK Tourney channel. Until then, thank you for watching, and have a good night.